Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer and moved to Arsenal. Now, after watching the Champions League final last night and seeing Loris Karius in goal for um, Liverpool and the blunders that he made, I mean, honestly, I think two of the worst goalkeeping errors you're ever, ever going to see in the final of any competition. Um, it just showed you the importance of having a top-class goalkeeper. Um, I mean, you know, ask Man United fans, who's been their best player yet again this year, and it's been their keeper. You know, he, he's, he's kept them in so many games. I remember when we played um, Man United, what was it he pulled off? Well, we had over 30-odd shots, and he was pulling off miracle save after miracle save. A goalkeeper is as important as having a top-class striker. Because as you saw last night, if your goalkeeper's not very good, he can lose you a game in seconds. And it's been a problem area for Arsenal last season. Petr Cech came in. He's not been the same Petr Cech. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what Petr Cech is like, actually, this season under a new goalkeeping coach. Because a lot of the criticism has been that when he came to Arsenal, he didn't bring his goalkeeping coach that he had with him at Chelsea for years with him and was still under Arsenal's goalkeeping coach, who's one of the people that um, Arsenal have gotten rid of, <clears throat> who's a decent goalkeeping coach but have become a bit old-fashioned in his methods, etc. So maybe Czech might improve, but Petr Cech, on the whole, didn't have a great season last season. David Ospina... Doesn't seem to be the answer. He's a decent backup, but it doesn't seem to be the answer. And Arsenal definitely out there looking at goalkeepers. Now, their main target seems to be Bernd Leno. We've been uh, discussing it a lot on the show. Uh, Bernd Leno, Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, a very, very good goalkeeper. I think he's about 26 now. Um, and Arsenal have looked at him extensively. Sven Lisbonintat in particular knows him from his time in Germany. It looks like Bayer Leverkusen um, are resigned to the fact that he's going because they've already bought in a replacement goalkeeper for him. So Bern Leno definitely going to be on the move. And the likely destination is that he's going to be heading to Arsenal. But I don't know a lot about Leno, right? Apart from he's coming from Germany, which is where Carrius came from. Maybe the whole Carrius thing from yesterday is getting me nervous now about Leno as to how good he is. But I, I have to admit, I've not really um, seen much of Leno, so I can't really comment on just how good he is. But they would have scouted him extensively. But as I said, Carrius came in with a big reputation from Germany and he has been horrendous, not just last night, all season. And um, as I said, you saw the importance of a decent keeper last night. Could also be moving for another keeper, actually, and a keeper that Unai Emery knows very well from his time at Sevilla, and that's Sergio Rico. Now, Sergio Rico um, is said to be available for about £18 million. Looks like he's going to be on the move um, this season. He's only 24, by the way, so that's a good age for a goalkeeper. Um, and he's said to be on the move this season. Um, and again, Sevilla said to be looking at about three to four different goalkeepers to replace him at the moment. Um, so again, Unai Emery would know him, know him very well, would trust him, and um, could be a person that he could bring him. But yet again, I don't know a lot about um, Sergio Rico. Obviously a very competent goalkeeper, um, and has been at Sevilla for quite a while, has come through the ranks and you know, has proven himself. I think he's got one cap for Spain, um, but then it's not an easy, you know, to get into Spain's national team as a goalkeeper when you see the goalkeepers that, you know, they have available like De Gea. So that's never going to be easy to get in there as a goalkeeper. But um, that's another person that Arsenal are looking at. One keeper that I'm surprised that Arsenal have not looked at, maybe it's to do with the potential price of him, and that's Jack Butland of Stoke City. Stoke, of course, relegated. Um, Butland has been making noises like, you know, um, if he has to stay, he'll be up for staying. He'd love to get Stoke back up. But at the end of the day, he's uh, England international. He's going to be going to the World Cup. And being in a championship doesn't help your chances of playing for England. As you can see, Ryan Sessignon of Fulham, who had a great season. A lot of people thought that possibly he could go to the World Cup. 
the manager turned around and said, listen, uh, he's playing in the championship, so I can't gauge him 100% until he's playing in the Premier League week in, week out. Someone like Jack Butler is going to be looking at that and thinking, no, I need a really and secretly, I want to be in the Premier League. That's where everybody wants to be. And um, why not Arsenal make a move for Jack Butland? He's available. Um, he's a top, top goalkeeper. Every time I've seen him play against Arsenal, he's been excellent. Still quite young, only 25. And he's Premier League ready. You know, Premier League ready. He knows the Premier League inside out. Knows the sort of teams you're going to come up against. Knows how to deal with the, you know, the aggression and to deal with the physicality of the Premier League. And as I said, still only 25. England international. I think he'd be absolutely perfect for Arsenal. And for me, when I look at all the goalkeepers in England, I rate him as the best. Um, I know a lot of people go Jordan Pickford of, of um, Everton, but I think that Butland's got a better all-round game because his kicking's better as well as his shot stopping. Um, so why not Arsenal go for him? Price would, I mean, they're saying that his valuation's from about £20 million upwards. I reckon it'd probably be 30 to 35 million pounds. But as I said, after you watch last night's game, you see the importance of having a top quality goalkeeper because no matter how brilliant you are going forward, if your keeper at the other end's throwing them in, you've got no chance of winning the game. So I, I would love to see Arsenal be moving in for someone like um, Butland, but it does look like Leno. Um, but for me, this shouldn't be a price issue. This should be, this is such an important position that Arsenal should be going out there and getting the best man for the job. Burn Leno might be. He might be the best person for the job. I just don't know. I'm going to be open and honest. I just don't know enough about him. But I know about Butler and I've seen him in the flesh. I've seen him play regularly and he is a top keeper. And I think a keeper as well that in a better team was shown to be even better than what he is right now. So, um, who knows? Um, G. Michelle Serry still being heavily, heavily linked to Arsenal. Um, even uh, his agent was being asked about, um, you know, could Jim Serry end up in England? And his agent said, listen, um, yes, um, there's several clubs in England um, chasing G. Michelle Serry. It's no secret that Arsenal are one of those very heavily um, in for him. It could boil down to Seri making a choice between going to Napoli, which of course Ancelotti's just taken over, or Arsenal. And the thing is about these choices now is that um, these clubs have got Champions League football. You know what I mean? We don't, you know? And, uh, you know, any footballer sitting down watching that final last night and that great goal by Gareth Bale and, you know, all the superstars on show will be looking at it and thinking, oh, I'd love to be in that competition. That's what I'd love to be playing at. That is a disadvantage that Arsenal have right now in playing only Europa League football. But um, Seri still being heavily linked. Arsenal also linked to another midfielder today, Dennis Pratt. Um, Pratt, he plays for Sampdoria currently, 24 years of age. Um, said to have a buyout clause of £22 million, which uh, obviously Arsenal always love to hear them type of things. Uh, and also interested in signing the young Belgian player. He's very highly rated, had a very, very good season with Sam Doria. Um, also wanted by Juventus, and I always say that's always a decent benchmark when Juventus are looking at a player that's performed well for another team in Italy because that means that he must be a good player. Um, attacking midfielder though, and again, we've got a lot of attacking midfielders. If Arsenal are looking at a player like this, does that mean that we're losing one of Jack Wilshire or maybe Ramsey? You know. Uh, really, really interesting, really interesting that they're looking at so many attacking midfielders right now, but then we always are looking at attacking midfielders. Um, Lorenzo Pellegrini is another one. Spoke about him earlier on in the week. Um, Arsenal still holding a lot of interest in, in the Roman midfielder. And, uh, you know, several clubs again, Juventus, another one of those clubs looking at him, but several clubs again looking at him. He also has a buyout clause as I spoke about during the week, and Arsenal still said to be uh, very, very interested in signing him. Deep line midfielder this time, and uh, would definitely add to Arsenal's team if Arsenal were able to get him. Definitely a hot prospect over there at the moment in Italy. Another person um, that Arsenal have been linked with today is back to the Bundesliga again. 
Uh, I'll tell you, Arsenal really seem to be uh, going real German heavy. Obviously, Mislin Tat and uh, has, has got a real influence on that. Um, remember, once upon a time, all our players we used to go. Everything used to be French, French, French. Then we went for a phase where. We're looking in Spain a lot. Now it seems to be Germany is the new place where we're looking, you know, so much for players. But um, Kerim Dember, Der, Kerim Derime, um of Hoffenheim, 24 years of age. Another attacking midfielder, though. Um, Arsenal looking at him. Very interested in signing him, according to um, a lot of reports out in the media today. Again, could Arsenal be looking at a lot of these players with the thought that one of Jack Wilshire or maybe Aaron Ramsey could move on, so we need a sort of a replacement for them. What about Gareth Bale? He was making up a lot of noises last night about, you know, he wants to play regular football. Why not bring him in? I mean, he probably would never come because uh, this Tottenham connections and plus as well, the amount of money he costs, that's not going to be on Arsenal's radar. But, oh, that'd be... Uh, Imagine the Tottenham fans if Gareth Bale ended up at Arsenal. That would be another Sol Campbell moment, but yeah, I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming right now. Um, more likely to be happening at Arsenal is uh, Socrates. He's still today, a lot of outlets going with the fact that he could be Arsenal's first signing of the summer. Um, a, lot of clubs look, a lot of clubs interested in him. Manchester United, apparently one of those interested in him. A lot of clubs looking at him because uh, only one year left on his contract. So you'd be able to get him in for fairly cheap. But the really experienced Greek international centre-back, we need a centre-back desperately, as we all know from watching the team last season. Is he the answer? A beast out there on the pitch, a real roughhouse. Um, but does he have the pace for the Premier League? That would be one thing that would worry me a bit. But Socrates... Um, still seems to be one that a lot of people are talking about. Could be one of Arsenal's first signings. And also, as I said yesterday, Stefan Lichtensteiner was at the training ground on Friday uh, at London Coney for talks with Arsenal. Could he also be coming in? As I said, I think a sensible um, you know, decision if we do get him. And I, looking in the comments yesterday, most of you guys seem to agree with me You know that you know it would make sense he would offer a lot of competition to Hector Bellerin and, you know, why not? Why not try and bring this guy in if he's available? We definitely need a backup right back. Hector Bellerin literally had to play week in, week out last season, whether he was on form or not. And Lichtensteiner, who's a vet, or Lichtenstein, I keep saying Lichtensteiner, Lichtensteiner, who's a very um, experienced uh, right back, very experienced player, who's won multiple things, is just the sort of player that you need to give a lot of competition to Hector Bellerin. However, it's going to be down to Lichtensteiner. Does he want to come in and just play as a backup? Or is he looking at it, now? I'm 34, I want to be playing week in, week out, so I want to go somewhere where I'm going to play. Again, we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen with that. I think we're going to see a lot of movement over the next two weeks at Arsenal because the World Cup, of course, starts on the 14th of June. So we're closing in on that now, not too long to go, just a couple of weeks to go. And a lot of teams are going to be wanting to get a lot of their business done before the World Cup. Number one, players are going away, they're in camps and stuff like that. And, you know, it's harder to get the business done if your player is away with a national team. He doesn't want to be distracted. He wants to get that sorted out before he goes. We all remember... The, the Euros, when we were trying to get the Jamie Vardy thing done and he had to go away to the Euros and stuff like that. Never an ideal time. So Arsenal will be looking to get business done before that. And then, you know, once the tournament starts, you know, those players are away, you know. So if, if you want to get a player signed that's going to be potentially an international player, you know, playing in the World Cup, you, you want to get that done before it starts. Of course, there's other players that you can sign that won't be at the World Cup, but the ideal time will be in this two-week window leading up to the World Cup. So I think we might see some movement. And remember this year, it's a shortened transfer window. Transfer window shuts in early August. So, and the World Cup, of course, finishes, um, you know, at the end of, towards the end of July. So teams haven't got a lot of time to get things done. It's not your normal transfer window that would finish at the end of August. It will be, it will be like that for the rest of Europe. But we voted over here um, in the Premier League 
to finish the window um, early, just before the start of the season. So teams now really have to start motoring and moving fast. So interesting couple of weeks coming up um, for Arsenal when it comes to the transfer window. Thanks for watching the show. If you want to find out what happens, this is the place to keep it locked right here on Arsenal Fan TV. As I keep telling you guys, World Cup coming up. The best coverage of the World Cup is going to be here on Arsenal Fan TV. AFTV is going to be doing the World Cup. So make sure you look out for that. We're going to be over in Russia as well. Thanks for watching the show. I will be back tomorrow.